hasn't gone yet. Um, let's popcorn to Lizbeth. Have, I don't know if you've gone, but if you haven't, go ahead. Yeah, hi. Can you guys hear me? Good. Okay. Uh, so I'm Lizbeth. I go to Moorpark College and I'm a first year and I'm a psychology major. Uh, if I were to pick an animal, I think I would be a cat because I like to sleep a lot, but can be secretly really active. <laughs> yeah, uh, I popcorn. Uh, Samantha? Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm from Davis. Um, I'm a first year and I'm a chemical engineering major. Um, I was going to say I'm a sloth too, but I'll just go with favorite animal. <laughs> uh, so probably dolphins or pandas. And then I'm going to popcorn to my predecessor, Willie. Hey, what's up? My name is Will. Um, I'm, a, I'm from UC Davis. I recently graduated. So I don't have a position, but my previous position was VPS. Um, Y'all already took all the good animals, so I'm going to just say I'm a manatee because I'm like floating every single day at this point because there's nothing to do. Oh, I totally forgot to popcorn someone. Oh, who? Let's, let's, let's go to Chio. Hello, my name is Chio. I am Sac State's Vice President of Service, and I am a first year. An animal to describe me. Um, so like, I was on I was on a board this year, and our theme was like animals. So I was a turtle, and I think that it really fits well because like, outside of my like environment or like where like you'd usually see me. I'm kind of like slow on the uptaking, trying to like get a grasp of things, trying to like probably even go back to my environment. But once I get in, settled in and stuff like that, I'm completely different. So, you know, like turtle on land, turtle in the water, two different, two different um, scenarios kind of thing. So, yeah. That's uh, a uh, popcorn, Chloe. Hi, um, I'm Chloe. I'm the VPS at Pasadena City College, um, and I'm a first year pre-nursing major. If I could be any, or I'd say that my spirit animal is a worm because I like to make um, people happy and the worms make dirt happy and plants happy. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll popcorn to grace you. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Grace. I am the VPS at uh, University of the Pacific. I'm a second year bio major. Um, if I had to choose an animal, I think uh, I would choose owl because I like chilling near trees and <laughs> I've been becoming more nocturnal lately. Um, I'm gonna pop corn to Wee, my president. Uh, hi, I'm Hui, I'm from UOP. Um, an animal that would describe me would be, uh, I guess a monkey, because I like hanging out, <laughs> and, uh, let's see, I'll popcorn, um, who else went, let's see, Lila. <laughs> Of popcorn Lila. Okay, hello, my name is Lila. I am a third year biochem major and I'm the president at UC Davis. And I'm gonna just say my animal is a cat, even though it's been used, because I'm like tired all day, but then for some reason I get a spurt of energy at, like at night and I stay up to like five every day. So yeah, I'm a cat. Oh, at the popcorn. Um, has Clarissa went? Uh, just a heads up that we'll be ending our icebreaker very soon because we have limited time. So yeah, let's go, John. Clarissa, are you? Oh, thank you, Clarissa. Are you? Are you there? 
Does anyone else who's a VPS or service chair want to introduce himself? Okay, Tiffany. Um, hello, I'm the I'm Tiffany. I'm um, the VPS at UCI. I'm a second year education major, and I would say both. Because my favorite animal is the otters, because I don't know why they're just cute when they swim. And the animal that I like represents me is like a beaver because I spend like 12 hours just doing work. Like a beaver works on their dam. So yeah, so I have a lot on my plate. I'm a beaver. It's Tiffany. <laughs> All right, we'll take, we have time to take one more person. One more person. Hey guys. <laughs> Wait. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, my name is Jackie Vallow, and I'm the VPS for University of Nevada, Reno. I'm a first year microbio major with a double minor in Spanish and human development. And my spirit animal is probably a dolphin because I've done competitive swimming. All right. Um... So yeah, this concludes our icebreaker. Thank you guys all for participating and introducing yourself. Um, and again, thank you all for being in this workshop. Really appreciate you. Me and Sandra, Sandra appreciates you a lot. Um, yes, uh, we'll be moving next to Sandra's uh, duties and expectations as VPS. Awesome, thanks John. So now we're just gonna get into the meat of this workshop, uh, which are the expectations and duties of a VPS. Uh, so since we've done an overview, uh, or let's, uh, for your main duties, you will be planning diverse and meaningful service projects for the club. You're going to be communicating with your event coordinators and members about what kind of service projects you'll be planning for the club to do. Uh, you'll be organizing carpool. You'll be advertising service events to your members. You're going to be doing a great deal of education on the district service initiative, international service initiative, and international service partners, and anything related to the DSI. And Lastly, but most importantly, you're gonna be embodying a spirit of service. So this is gonna segue us into how to be successful as a VPS. Uh, we're gonna talk about qualities that we think make someone in this position uh, successful and what that means for them. So what makes a VPS, so the first, quality that I want to talk about is transparency. Uh, you might hear people joke about transparency a lot because it's a given that you should actively try to communicate with people you're working with, like your board or your counterparts. Uh, but transparency is always something that's really important uh, just because you want to make sure everyone is on the same page. In regards to VPS, you want to make sure you're informing your members about event details, like what's expected of them to do when they're volunteering at your event. Uh, and this is also so you can better prepare your members to volunteer. The next quality we're gonna talk about is empathy. Uh, in this position, you have to assess what needs have to be met in, this, in the community around you and how you can offer the club to be of some kind of service to those that need help. Uh, you also have to be very understanding if things don't really go your way. So let's just say, for example, your members drop out last minute or the coordinator gets upset with you. Uh, you should actively try to practice empathy and try to understand where other people are coming from which leads me to the next quality, which is honesty. Uh, you wanna make sure your members trust you, which means you also need to be very honest about how you're working on service and how you define service for your club. Uh, how we, you define service will be talked about later in this presentation, but just be real with your members and always make sure you're being transparent and honest with them. Uh, and my last quality that I think is the most important quality that you can have in B, for BPS is positivity. Uh, it's really difficult to have, always have a positive outlook on life, and that's normal. We put a lot of pressure on people to be positive all the time, but in this position, you're going to have those days where morale is low at service projects, and the environment you're serving in is not so great. So what you need to do is you really need to inject some positivity into yourself so you can motivate your members. And then John will talk about his four qualities. Yes, so, uh, so I go... Yeah, I got the other four qualities that makes a VPS. Um, the first one I chose was flexibility. Uh, being a flexible person, um, you have to, you got to have the willingness and the ability to respond to uh, changing circumstances and expectations. Uh, 
there'll be many times where things will not go as planned, such as volunteers dropping on last minute um, or having to find events last minute. Uh, but it is, yeah, you, you have to get adjusted to those unforeseen circumstances. And it is an important skill that will help you deal with last minute changes, new ideas, and many more. Uh, another trait that I got is consistency by being consistent throughout the term. Um, you will build trust among not only uh, with your board members, but also general members, your advisors, um, or any event coordinators. Providing thorough and clear service updates every time during your general meetings or uh, keeping in touch with the coordinators regularly is an important mindset that a VPS should um, must have, in my opinion. Um, and next I got accountability. Um, uh, being a VPS uh, means that, yeah, like Sandra said earlier, you are the face of, uh, for the service aspect of the club. So if anything is uh, service related, then you, you will be responsible for that. Any decisions you make, um, actions you take, or any uh, projects or events you host, you'll be accountable for, accountable for all of them. Uh, learning, you also have to make sure to learn how to move on from your mistakes and successes um, to achieve even further. Um, that'll make you a great VPS. And lastly, I believe that creativity um, is crucial in terms of coming up with new and innovative concepts, uh, themes, or ideas. Um, even if you don't, do not consider yourself as a creative person, you are still capable of coming up with new uh, ideas if you have an open mind um, and are willing to uh, spend time, uh, really spend some time researching for them. And uh, lastly, um, it is totally okay if you don't have all these um, characteristics or traits that Sandra and I mentioned, but um, yeah, like no one is supposed to be perfect. So if anything, uh, take this uh, being a VPS position as, and being on board as like an opportunity for you to practice and develop these. Um, yeah, next uh, I'll be going over how to find service events. Uh, yeah, there are many ways and sources that you should look into when you are searching for any service events. Uh, first, you can look into look into any nonprofit organizations near you uh, by browsing any websites. You will mainly be using uh, Volunteer Match, but there are other websites that are uh, extremely helpful, like uh, ONOC, Just Serve. Lover Cities, LA Work, Points of Life, Idealist, or Free, free Rise as listed above. Um, like the nice thing about volunteering website currently right now is with all the coronavirus outbreaks and quarantine affecting our daily lives, uh, just these websites added a new tab that is uh, uh, specifically dedicated to um, the virus volunteering or digital services that anyone can do. Um, without leaving their home. So you may be able to find quality events if you spend some time researching and looking for one. Um, you can also reach out to your local Kiwanians or various Kiwanis branches like Key Club or Kiwans um, Action Club or even your alumni to see if they need help with um, anything. Uh, even if they may not have anything for you as of now, um, there will be times um, throughout the term where they do, they will need your help. So uh, they'll be happy to let you all help them out. Another option you have is you can look into any events hosted on your school's campus. Uh, for example, Associated Students, Honor Society, or many other service-oriented um, organizations may need help with more volunteers. Um, Mainly, it is uh, effective to, part, uh, to be part of these on-campus events since you don't have to worry too much about carpool issues or whatnot. Everyone's going to be living um, either on campus or uh, near campus. And also, by doing so, your club can build up reputations 
within your school. Um, yeah. There is also a possibility that other CKI clubs need help, um, need help and uh, by interclubbing, uh, you can reach out to other clubs within your division and potentially um, attend the same events altogether. And by doing so, you, uh, you will be able to um, also, uh, not only volunteer, but also um, build, build friendship and develop stronger bonds within uh, the division. Um, if you can, if you tried all these above um, can still can't find any events you can make your own by hosting a tabletop service projects uh, that includes like um, writing thank you cards for your um, for your Kiwanians or like during this day right now you can write letters for uh, to healthcare workers uh, yeah basically you can make anything you want so that you can donate or use it for other um, causes and you can also ask your general members for their input if you want to be more diverse and interactive. Uh, yes and I'll be moving on to uh, the volunteer coordinator outreach. Um, so there are many ways of communicating with your with the volunteer coordinators but I'll say that the main ways of doing so is through emails um, and when you when you're sending out an email to them, it is really important to introduce yourself, uh, explain what CKI is and what we do, uh, your positions and clubs, and ex like really express your club's interest in volunteering for the event. Um, if you do receive a response from the coordinator, uh, make sure to follow up with them regarding specific informations like uh, waiver forms, dress codes, parking information. Um, and many more. And if you don't get any response from them, uh, try to follow up with them uh, three or five days after. And if you still don't anything, if you, if you still don't hear anything from them, then uh, yeah, you should just like move on and find another event. Um, yeah. Uh, and I will be handing everything to Sandra now. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds good. Okay, up next, we're going to talk about planning service projects. So there are some there are some things that you need to keep in mind when you are actually planning them. So the best thing to do is plan at least a month in advance. This is so that you have almost an entire month planned out with service projects. Always try to aim for at least one service project every week, just so that you have something for members to participate in that constantly reminds them of going to service. Uh, make sure that your service projects do not conflict with events. For the most part, service should come first for your organization, uh, where, whichever school you're at. So always try to make sure you have the dates for your service events and share that with your board. That way they can schedule around you. Uh, next thing we're gonna talk about is advertising. So you wanna make sure that you advertise at least a week in advance. If it's a larger event, you wanna make sure you advertise at least two or three or four weeks in advance, just so that members know this event is happening, especially if it's something like a 24 hour service marathon or a DLSSP. Uh, these are things that you need to consider that really contribute to what, when you start advertising these events. Another thing to consider is early cutoff. So for a lot of events that you sign up for uh, with other nonprofits, they usually ask you to send a list of names of people signed up already, but sometimes people can choose whether or not they wanna drop for events and you never really know the estimated amount of people going. So this is on your best judgment, you know, when is the best time for you to promote an event, especially if you want to do an event that you've, your club has never done before. You want to make sure you work it out with the coordinator and at least communicate with them. You know, if your club operates off of promoting these events at least two or one week before the event, just make sure the coordinator is informed about that. Um, but if it is a really large event and there's a really early cutoff time, then make sure you advertise as soon as possible. Uh, this can go for things like interclubbing service projects that you do with other Circle K clubs. Uh, sometimes those spots don't last long and you need to help other clubs fill their spots as well. So make sure that you always advertise in advance. And you're going to want to use graphics or images from past events to promote your event. If it's a recurring event that your club has done before in the past, you want to make sure that you can pull those images so people can see you know, their club members at that service event. And uh, that will motivate them to want to go because they're seeing, you know, your other club members who are there. 
So those are some important things to keep in mind when you are planning service projects. Another thing to consider is something called a service hour. So what is a service hour? Uh, so the district has come up with this definition where a service hour means minutes of uncompensated volunteering that benefits a charitable and or a nonprofit organization. Uh, so the money generated must be donated to a charitable entity, uh, such as our DFIs, and the events must be properly advertised to the entire club as a Circle K service event, and your work must be done voluntarily. Uh, especially with everything going on right now with the quarantine, it is actually getting a little bit more difficult to define service. Uh, so you as a VPS are going to have to figure out what defines a service hour for your club. You know, if, for example, you're doing the free rice project, uh, if you can donate, let's say, like a thousand grains of rice after putting in an hour of work, then that's one service hour. But if you can only donate, or if you can only volunteer for 20 minutes, but you've donated so much more uh, in terms of, you know, the rice grains, then that doesn't necessarily constitute a service hour, in, in my opinion, just because you want to make sure your members are actively serving an entire hour of service. Uh, so this is something that will affect all of you since you're actively planning service for people right now, especially with the quarantine. So this is something important to keep in mind when planning service projects. Another thing that you need to consider is meaningful versus impactful service projects. Uh, so the definition of meaningful is all service events are meaningful, but not all of them is impactful. And it's really up to your own interpretation what defines meaningful for you. So let's say, for example, my home club, uh, Cassie Fullerton, we do this project every month called, uh, or it's not really called anything, but it's just a cleanup where we go to this nature center uh, that we built a partnership with this high school. Uh, and we go every month to volunteer and clean up the nature center because, you know, we understand the importance of retaining tradition, especially when it comes to service. And it's really meaningful for our members to be able to attend every month and uh, just meet the coordinator and get to have a conversation with her and she's actually the password of this zoom call too uh, so you know those types of projects are very meaningful to the club and they will 100 percent motivate your members to want to sign up for that project even if it's the same thing that you do every single time so that's something to consider when you're thinking about doing meaningful projects um, something else you can consider is impactful projects so this is where there is a, an objective benefit and you can see that immediately after the service project is over you can see the direct impact of what you're doing so an example of this is if you volunteer at a food bank or a food distribution center and you're asked to bag, uh, let's say like 50 bags of non-perishable items or perishable items. And after two hours time, you've bagged like 50 to 75. And you can physically see that in front of you in one of those uh, containers that they have. And that is the definition of impactful. You know, when you can see the work that you've contributed and you're gonna see that be donated to food pantries or people in need. And that's something definitely really important to consider, you know, the difference between meaningful versus impactful and if you can find service projects that can offer both for your members. And then John will go ahead and talk about the next important thing, which is transportation. Thank you, Sandra. Um, so yeah, transportation. Um, I don't know if you guys already like went through all the, okay, you guys haven't because, we're all quarantined, um, but yeah, so if you do get out of quarantine, um, transportation or carpool could be either very like easygoing and, or it could be very like frustrating because it can get wrong, it, it can get wrong in, in many other ways. Uh, but in order to prevent those problems, um, you always have to uh, make sure that people, uh, your volunteers need rides. Um, from the personal experience I have, I had this one uh, board member that was very stubborn to like, um, kind of, she was, she was like very shy and stubborn and didn't really want uh, to reach out to others for rides. And then she ended up not going to a lot of events and I really felt bad. Uh, just, it's really good to remind them that, um, we're there to help and we're there, we're there to um, help them participate in an event and whatnot. Um, and always, you got, always have to make sure to have backup drivers just in case, like one or two is good enough, more than enough. Uh, this is just to prevent uh, for uh, the original drivers to like 
drop out last minute just just because i mean like there could be there could they could have any like uh like a family emergency or something happening so like we're trying to be like empathetic and you know try to make the best out of all the situations um oh you also gotta have like alternative like transportation options uh, you can look into either like public transportations like like bus or private ones like uber or you know like lyft uh, but always keep in mind that those options uh, have like a safety hazard, safety risks behind them. Uh, know that most most CCAT clubs don't really have any um, problem with this, but for like clubs like Orange Coast College, for example, um, we have a policy that forbids us from using services like Uber uh, for the safe of safe, safety issues and like saving money. So, I mean, if we do have to use these transportation options, just make sure that um, you, you, know, you gotta be extra careful uh, and don't put them as your primary way of um, uh, bringing volunteers to their events. Um, and last resort, um, if you do, uh, if there are limited drivers or there's not much options you can do to uh, bring those volunteers to the actual site, um, the event site, um, you unfortunately have no choice but to uh cut off members through the to, through this hierarchy system so you, obviously you gotta prioritize the general members by all means necessary so that uh they can make the most out of uh the most experience out of everything um and you can you it really it's really up to your club on how to how you would prioritize like who, who gets to go to the event but um Board mem in my opinion, board members uh, should be like on the very bottom of the list um, so that we put all other general members and non-board members um, first. Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Sandra, I'll hand over, to, uh, hand over all the speaking to Sandra for, to describe this very innovative term that she came up with. Yes, thank you, John. Uh, I actually wanted to comment a little bit more about the hierarchy system because my club has personally experienced this, especially very early on in my term this year. Uh, this is a project where uh, it's kind of a big event, but we didn't realize that we had overbooked with other organizations that were planning to attend. So we found out pretty last minute that we had to drop people. So I think we went from 25 members who were planning on going to 10 members. So I had to figure out how am I supposed to prioritize people, especially since this project is a little bit further away from uh, like our school. And this is in the summertime as well. So uh, my solution for this, and this pertains to the last resort idea, but you really do have to cut off members via hierarchy system. So you really wanna prioritize new members who've never been to this project before because sometimes service projects are really what determines whether or not they stay in the club. And especially, you know, they joined the club because they wanted to community service for the most part. So you definitely wanna give the focus to them. Uh, next, you can prioritize drivers because drivers are the people who will get your new members to these events. And that's super important to consider. Uh, at the very bottom of the chain, like John said, like you really, don't prioritize board members for this specific project i had to drop 90 percent of my board members from this event uh and although it was sad that you know we didn't we weren't able to accommodate every single person signed up for this project uh, it is a necessity so that your new members who you know have never experienced this kind of event can do so because you know you're providing the means for them to do so so that's just something really important to consider when it comes to like the hierarchy system with anything pertaining to service uh so this is going to go into my next thing this is a, a creative acronym that one of my predecessors made during their term and it, it may sound kind of funny to you at first uh, and it's not inappropriate in terms of circle k but this acronym is called crack so i'm just gonna explain and break down what crack means in like in relation to service and within circle k so the c and crack stands for carpool so this this is really helpful for general members who want to chair events and they don't really know how to do so so this is something that you would teach them but 
for C, carpool, you want to arrange carpool and make sure that every member who signed up for this project has a ride to this project, no matter what. And this is something that, you know, that's basically your first task. You have to make sure like which, which members are going to go in a specific car to this project, you know, who's going to pick up who. And you want to make sure that you set it up so that, you know, it's something that you're taking care of before the event is actually happening, which goes into the second thing, which is reminder, which stands for the R and crack. Uh, you want to make sure you remind your members before the day of the event that the service project is happening and remind them of important things that the coordinator told you. So let's say the coordinator wants the volunteers to wear a certain attire, closed toed shoes, hair up. Uh, they don't want anyone to bring any water bottle or personal belongings. They tell you a little bit more about parking. Uh, maybe parking costs money and uh, they tell you you're not allowed to uh, like take pictures or things like that. So those are things that you would relate to your members who are signed up for the project. You can create a group chat or you can text them individually to remind them that this service project is happening the next day. So usually how I would do this is in my text message, I would just say, hello, whoever this person is. Thank you so much for signing up for this project. This, this, this is just a friendly reminder that the event is taking place tomorrow at this time at this location. This is a reminder that parking costs $5 and you are expected to wear this and that and that, I mean, whatever. Uh, thank you so much for signing up and I'll see you tomorrow. And this is usually where they, they're literally reminded that they have service the next day and they're just like, oh my God, do I decide to go or not? And this is also where you'll find out if they decide to drop from the event or not. So reminders are very, very important. If it's a large scale event, so for example, if it's a district large or divisional large scale service project, uh, oh wait, that's not the term for it. It's divisional service project, a DSP. Uh, then you wanna make sure they know at least a week in advance so they know what's happening and you put them into a group chat so people can just see who's going and who's not. So reminders are very, very important. Uh, this goes into the next thing, like once you get to the event, something that you need to do is attendance. Uh, for attendance, you want to make sure you're tracking, you know, how long people are at the event, you know, from the moment they start doing service to, you know, the, the minute they stop doing service, you need to make sure you track those hours for your members. Uh, and you can usually do this. It's, I mean, for the most part, everyone serves up to the hour that they're there, but sometimes people leave early. So just take that into consideration. You also want to make sure you record attendance of other Circle K clubs in the area that also attended this event or anybody else in the Kiwanis family who attended this event. And uh, usually you would be able to uh, include a tag, like a Kiwanis tag on the surf uh, if there are more clubs going. So that's just something to keep in mind. But specifically for your club, make sure you actively know how many hours people are there so you can give them the hours, which goes into the next thing, C. C is for surf. Uh, for those of you who don't know, SURF stands for Club Event Report Form, and that's where you, you know, you fill out this long form uh, that's actually being offered in two different forms this year, uh, and you input all the service hours that a member has attended and for a specific event. You want to make sure you do this within two to three days after the event so that your secretary gets this and is able to input it into the MRF. Uh, for general members who are chairing this event, they usually are given more leeway with turning this in on time. So like maybe within a week of the service event, they have to turn it in. Uh, but for the surf specifically as a board officer, please surf in advance, like two to three days within the event because you're gonna forget later on and then it's just gonna start racking up. So make sure you surf people, make sure people get their hours and then submit it to your secretary. And the last thing, people often don't do this uh, because you know at the end of the service project, you're really exhausted and you just kind of wanna go home and not do any more. But something you really need to do at the end of every service project is you need to impart knowledge. So maybe the people who sign up for your service project, they've never attended your meeting where you talked about this project, or maybe they're not on social media. So the first time they're experiencing this project is literally like being at that project on that day. So something you need to do is you need to educate your members. You need to tell them you know, the impact that they made, the meaning of the service project, uh, if it has any meaning to you or to the club. And you need to show or verbally tell them you know, what they did really does go a long way in terms of community service and you need to show how it's impacted our community. You can either do this through a kudos circle, which is what OCC does, uh, where they give members shout outs of you know, what they did really well at this event. Like, oh, thank you so much. Oh, you know, kudos to this person for driving. Uh, or, for circle, or for Kasi Fullerton, we do powwows where we basically just recap the event. Like, wow, like at this event, we packaged over you know, 10,000 pounds of food. That, that's really great and it's going to go a long way. It's going to help the community and you, know, you should be really proud of yourselves because we dedicated so much time to be here today and you know we couldn't have done this without you. So this is just a nice way to just thank people and also educate them more.
which I guess also goes into my next thing. Education is really, really important, uh, especially in regards to service. So something I'm going to talk about is very briefly, it's just things you need to educate members about. There are three pretty big important things you need to do. Um, so there's two different service initiatives. This year's district service initiative is serving the environment, which just are things pertaining to the environment. So uh, that's one of our, that's, that is our main district service initiative for this year, which directly ties into our district fundraising initiative, uh, the third one at least, which is the Environmental Defense Fund. So you wanna make sure you collaborate with your fundraising chair or your treasurer to raise awareness and educate members about those specifically. But we also have something called the International Service Initiative, uh, which is focusing on the future children. And this is primarily where you work uh, to face or to address issues that affect children ages six through 13 through whether like service projects or just awareness in general. So that's another thing you need to educate your members about because uh, all the VPSs that I've talked to during my term, they didn't really know what this was because this isn't something that is widely circulated within your club. So make sure that you're actively educating members about like, all of these things. And another thing you need to educate your members about are your international service partners. Uh, so I actually can't name them off the top of my head, so I'm just going to refer to the website to name off what they are. But it's March of Dimes, Junior Chamber International, Better World Books, Students Team Up to Fight Hunger, St. Baldrick's, UNICEF, and they actually just added a new one recently, which is Global Brigades. So there's all these different service partners that uh, really isn't educated enough on the club level, and it really does go a long way to just do service projects that relate to them. So some ways you can educate your members about these service initiatives and partners, host workshops related to them, and plan and coordinate service projects. This will go a really long way in educating them by having them physically see and partic participating in these kind of projects. And then John can, can do engaging members. John. Wait, John, you're muted. Hi, guys. Hello again. John here. <laughs> I'll be going over, sorry about this, going, I'll be going over um, how to engage members through service. Um, so yeah, keeping your members engaged uh, to the club is one of the hardest tasks you'll be um, taking care of during your term. So yeah, the best best way of doing so is to like providing them leadership opportunities and keeping them uh, proactive and encouraging them to be a leader. Um, so one way of doing them uh, doing so is to uh, establish a service committee. Uh, it, this committee should consist of a vice president of service, a service chair if you have one, and various other. Uh, positions that you guys decide to appoint. And if you create one, uh, make sure to like host a committee meetings every week or two or and delegate tests uh, so that both you and your service chair um, have like less tasks to take care of, um, like less stressful. Um, if you don't have enough members or don't have a service chair, it's totally fine. Um, you can still um, form like one or two um, uh, committee that consists of like one or two members uh, is totally fine. Um, anything that works for you. Um, another option is to allow P uh, allow members to chair events um, by keeping them interactive and active active in um, letting them oversee like the volunteer activities and that includes like taking care of assistance, uh, filling out serfs, like. Sandra said before, um, and many other responsibilities you are, um, yeah, helping them be more inclusive. Um, and lastly, you can work on a feedback form and publish it to the members of your club so that they can fill it out. Um, and by having them share their um, input, input on how they feel about what like, current service events you guys have been hosting, um, and asking them for like the types of events that they would prefer. Uh, the feedback form can uh, hopefully spark interest of the members who are trying to volunteer and potentially uh, raise member uh, participations. Uh, it's also important in a way to let them know
uh, within the club and making important decisions. Uh, and I'll be moving next to discuss about recognizing members through service. So, um, yeah, so one way of recognizing your members uh, is to have like a member spotlight during every general meetings. Um, and by doing so, you're allowing them to have like a open floor to speak their experiences and allowing other members who are present at that meeting to uh, recognize and give them shout outs for their hard work and dedication um, and volunteering. Um, you also have, you can also have like a driver's appreciation as um, giving rides for people can be like extremely tiring and costly of course for those who drives a lot you, you guys will understand. Um, always remember that we cannot host or attend uh, events or even like uh, ensure like the success of the events without the help of the drivers so uh, always remember to um, give them a shout out or recognize them um, and adding on to that uh, if you wish to uh, help them by reimbursing gas money um, you can do so by communicating with your treasurers your advisors or your club or your board um, and allocate a certain portion of your club budget that can be used to uh, reward the drivers um, and this is always optional so like uh, if you guys can't do it, it's totally fine. Uh, you can, you guys can also make like a stamp card that can be used as an incentive to recognize and reward uh, members for attending service events. Um, like for example, if a member can receive like one stamp uh, for attending the service event, um, and if the member has like ten stamps, uh, they're eligible to win like a free boba from Seven Leaves or something like that. Um, and yeah, again, you got to have like enough resources and you got to plan accordingly to make this uh, be successful. Uh, another way of, yeah, there's like two more left. Uh, uh, another way of doing so is doing verbal affirmation during the, at the end of the event. Um, you can like gather up all the volunteers towards the end, go around and allow them to like cheer for one another for their hard work. I uh, know that for our our club, we have this thing called like kudo circles. And Sandra, you have your Kelsey Fortin Sika has like powwows, right? Yes. Yes. So yeah, these are like cool ways of like kind of boosting like everyone's morale after they're like done with volunteer events and tired. Um, yeah. And lastly, we got the MRP member recognition program. So there are like four different tiers, uh, bronze, silver, gold, and plat. I believe you need 50 hours for bronze, 84 silver, uh, 130 for gold, and 184? No, two, 200 for plat. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah, you can recognize and like remind your members often that which tiers that they are in and um, hopefully um, they'll be more encouraged and recognized for their work. Uh, and next I will be, or yes, Sandra will take, give some oh, general yes. advice for y'all. Yes, also to everyone asking questions in the chat, I will uh, answer those questions in discussion. Uh, but for general advice, you know, this is a time where it's pretty challenging, especially if you can't find service projects. And I can understand how frustrating and uh, irritating it can feel. And sometimes like, you know, in your, in your position, like you really do pride yourself on a, like finding service projects for your club to do. And it, it can be really deflating and discouraging for a lot of you. So uh, honestly, like my general advice for you is don't take this as an L. Like, Yes, it, it sucks that we have to stay in our own homes. We can't go out into the community and do community service, but you know, we are still very much doing our own part by social distancing and you know, trying to break the curve. Uh, and you know, later on, hopefully by the middle of the term, you'll be able to start booking more service projects and you'll actually be able to make an impact uh, on you know, the community. And so take this time to just find different ways to do service. I know a lot of you have already been planning different things, which is really great to see, 
but you know this is the time to really innovate what how you guys define service especially since this is a really exciting time where you really could redefine service like service can mean so many different things and i really encourage you to to continue pushing and continue innovating within service and that's my general advice for for me Should I add more into that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, awesome. So I got some general advices as well. Um, I, adding on to what Sandra said, like you gotta use your time effectively and wisely. Um, and you, yeah, time management is like really important. And like, I would say like, not just for VKS for, but for any other like core positions or outside CK as well. Um, like, from a personal experience, like coming into like last year, last term, like when I got appointed as v or elected as VPS, um, I just thought that like I can do everything, I can handle everything, like I can balance between school and life and everything really great. But turns out that I wasn't able to do that quite well. Um, so I really highly suggest you to kind of keep in track of all your schedules and events like we use like a calendar or something to keep in track of everything um be on top of everything uh, yeah like finding events getting approvals from your advisors or someone else or other places and planning service projects you gotta do everything early i know it's like really hard not to procrastinate but yeah it's, yeah you, you just gotta do it. <laughs> yeah like you know i feel like it's it's easy to say you won't burn out, but nine times out of 10, you will 100% burn out from this position. I've burned out a lot throughout my term, but uh, you know, you should really try to see like what makes you burn out. Like, is it like overworking yourself or overwhelming yourself with like numerous different things that you're doing? Uh, you can continue to burn out surprisingly, uh, especially like holding large scale original events, like a 24 hour service marathon, that can be very exhausting and you may put a lot into it and you don't realize you're burning out until you're actually maybe having the event or even after the event. And the best thing to do is, you know, learn what are ways to, like, to take care of yourself so that you can try to prevent burnout or limit the amount of burnouts you have throughout, throughout your term. Uh, and this, this goes into like another thing that people kind of joke about, but it's not like the best thing to joke about, which is resigning. So usually when people start experiencing a lot of burnouts, you know, they start to lose motivation and passion for what they're doing, especially when, you know, it gets to a point where they're trying to juggle everything going on in their lives. So something to consider is really evaluate your priorities, really try to plan ahead, because if you plan ahead, you can accomplish so much more earlier than trying to procrastinate and do everything later on. So, you know, just make sure you're pacing yourself and planning ahead that way, you know, and also remind yourself like, why, why did I run for this position? You know, I asked myself that question a lot this term, like, why, why did I run for this position? And, you know, I, I joined this club because I really care about helping people and I really love community service. And no matter what I might be experiencing, like maybe I'm not feeling particularly happy about a project I did or, maybe morale was low at an event, like that's okay. Like that's something that will pass, but my passion for community service is something that like, I want to continue developing. And you just need to think about like what really inspired you or motivated you to, to be in this position because you, know, you made a decision to, to be here to represent your club and to be the face of service. So you really need to take that last thing of the duties, which is embody the spirit of service. Uh, I'm not saying like you need to live, breathe a uh, service, but you just need to make sure that what you're doing with your club and what you're doing with service comes across as genuine and shows that you really do have personal investment in this. And that's how you're gonna motivate members to go to your events. Know, adding on to what Sandra said about burnouts, um, don't be like afraid to take like breaks if you really, really need it. Um, if you don't decide to take any breaks and just keep on going, you'll, you'll actually like, break down at some point. Uh, but before like, asking for uh, asking for your board to take a break uh, make sure to like plan accordingly um, that make sure to delegate all your tasks to um, someone else so that they can take care of yours for a short while um, while you're gone um, like even if it's like if you even if your break is like like three like a couple of days or something like it will definitely help you out um, yeah 
uh, that's pretty much. Yes. Okay, so you guys do need to sign in, but we also want to open a discussion with you. So we're going to have you sign in first. But thank you so much for coming to this, uh, this workshop. Please sign in so you get your credit for attending this meeting. Uh, you can either go to bit.ly CNH uh, SCC 2020, or you can scan this very helpful QR code and I'll take you directly to the form. Please make sure everyone who is here is signing in so you actually get credit. But thank you so much for you know, listening to us speak for an entire hour. We're probably gonna continue speaking more because we really wanna get to know you more and you know, try to help you out with any problems that you might be experiencing so far, especially with the first month of your term going by. So please sign in. And then we can jump back into discussion around 9, oh, I guess 9 or 5. So yes, if you want to stay for discussion and you know just get to meet your counterparts from around the district, please feel free to stay. And I, I'm okay with staying however long to talk to you guys. Likewise. Oh yes, if you would like to contact us separately, here are oh. our emails. Oh, a question. I totally forgot to you. And in my email, it's actually like, it's like John Park goes first and then CK goes after. Oh no, okay. Pretend you didn't see that, just reverse it. Okay, so someone has asked a question, what distinguishes UPS from service chair? So vice president of service is, uh, I feel like that's like an executive position that's established throughout like all over like CNH and Circle K International. And so that's someone who directly oversees the community service portion of your club and a service chair. That's just an optional thing if your club wants to do it. Uh, so I know some clubs like break that up even further. They have like single service chairs or like small scale service chairs or large scale service chairs. Like it gets really confusing like the more positions are created. Uh, but if your club is really, really big, then that makes more sense for you to have those kinds of positions. But a service chair is more of an A board officer that oversees your service committee. Uh, at least that's how I've seen people have service chairs. But John could talk about it because he has a service chair. Yeah, so um, it's really honestly up to how you interpret it. Because um, like for, uh, for our club, for example, like we've been struggling for many, many years on like distinguishing between BPS and general service chair. Um, like. What I, how I distinguished, separated them last year during my term is like, I focus more on like educating the members by doing like workshops, hosting workshops um, and focusing on like on campus events and like the general service chair would like focus more on like outside uh, off campus events and like reaching out to uh, coordinators and hosting tabletop services and like managing, um, delegating tasks to the the committee chairs or yeah committee members um so yeah like again it's like really up to how you interpret it yeah uh, it's really tough like doing that i understand yes it's entirely up to your club if they want to have a or to your board specifically if you want to have a service chair uh if you want someone to plan single service then you can have a single service chair but just keep in mind like the more chairs that are taking over service the less that you might be able to do uh so i know for Kelsey fullerton you know it's really up to the bps that they really want to have a service chair and during my term i couldn't really justify trading another position because you know i really wanted to be able to juggle everything so my alternative instead of a service chair was to have a service committee which is very very helpful and i feel like there's like three people from my committee who are here um but i mean let's see who's here Sabrina, would you like to talk about your experience being on my committee? Sure, I'd love to. Hold on. All right. Hello, guys. Again, I'm Sabrina. Um, so this is my first time being on a committee in Circle K, and I was gladly on the service committee. And it was really helpful because Sandra really did teach us a lot about like how to plan events for service and like the importance of like service and like having the knowledge like helping with carpool. We got to um, plan our 24-hour service marathon, which was really fun, very stressful, but I think we all did a good job on it. And it was just really, it was really fun to do because I wanted to get more involved. So I think being in service committee didn't make me more involved in Circle K. 
And so, yeah. Thanks, Abina. Uh, okay, yes, I can explain that. So I think someone earlier mentioned like the actual definition for powwow, which is true. Uh, it's like a Kelsey Fullerton to, or tradition to use powwows or call it a powwow. But that's just at the end of every service project where you just remind people of what they did at the service project. So an example, I guess I can give an example. Uh, this is a powwow. So, oh, oh my God, guys, like, thank you so much for attending this webinar. Like, it, it really means a lot, you know, education about service is really, really important. And, you know, we're really thankful that you were able to take as much as you could away from this workshop. So thank you so much for attending. A uh, shout out to uh, John, my, my co-host for, you know, put, you know, working so hard on this workshop and working on it since before DECON, because this is meant to be posted for DECON. Um, and, you know, shout out to all the VPS and service chairs who are in the Zoom call. Like, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you know, this is just a reminder that service is the core of our organization. And, you know, we're all here at the end of the day for the same reason, which is to promote service and you know, to embody the spirit of service. That's essentially what a power is. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, you basically just, you know, really hype people up, like, yeah, like, we came here today, we came here to serve. And, you know, like this nonprofit that we just volunteered with, like, you know, they do, they do this and that. And that's really great because like, by us being here, we're directly giving them an in, like, we're directly impacting them in such a positive way. And that really makes members feel like really validated for being there. Like, ah, like, wow, like I, me coming today, even though it was really early in the morning and I might be tired, like it doesn't matter anymore because, you know, it, like I, I want to be here because I'm helping. And you can use this for your pancake bre breakfast, which are at like six or 5 a.m. in the morning, where you can just hype people up for that. But yes, powwows are very useful. And so are kudos for this. Oh, Chloe had a question. Uh, Chloe Steer here. Chloe Steer here. Um, so yeah, so you asked like, how do you get members to fill out the feedback form? Um, uh, like like I said earlier, it's like really hard to get people engaged in um, like throughout like the middle towards like the end of the term. It's like really hard to get them um, engaged. But wait, this is like beginning of the term, so like it, I think you should be. Um, it really depends on how you like advertise it and say that saying that like advertising it um, consistently and uh, like just telling them like how it would have a great impact on like the service committee and their decision and helping the club host a better quality, better quality um, uh, volunteer events. So yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Justin, a question. what would you say is the best help a VPS can receive from another board member? Mm. Me personally, I would say it's just like attending the service events. <laughs> like the more you have, the more people you have in their um, events. Like, like I just, I'm just more, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, I mean, something else that's very helpful. So let's say you have a really large scale event, like if you're hosting a 24 hour, you alone cannot provide the morale booster the entire time you're gonna be really tired or at least for my 24 hour I was really tired uh, throughout the entire day and you know it's really hard to be on all the time so you know your board should be your biggest support system they should be the ones that are actively you know right there working alongside you making sure that they're hyping up the event they're hyping up your general members and yeah like we're here to volunteer today like you know uh, this is something that's really important to have at any event that you have because sometimes you know, you're only one person you can't oversee a really big group of volunteers if you're at a big event but your board members, you may have more board members in your, you know, that can help you do that and really facilitate the environment you're working in. Driving for service is another thing. Yeah. So a lot of people don't like driving because, I mean, the obvious reasons, it's, it's like it's expensive to continue doing it for the entire year. Uh, so you can recognize your members for doing that with, you know, gas reimbursements if you have enough money to do so as a club. But if not, then, you know, you just really want to make sure they feel recognized for what they're doing. So you can do this at banquet or honestly at general meetings every week. Like, all right, for our yeah, service sorry. drivers uh, spotlight, here are the number of people like, who drove people off the service. Like, thank you so much. Like, like what you did, like you were able to bring new members off the service. And so that's something to consider. Uh, let's see, another question we got was, what if a lot of people leave before the end of the event? Would a post be better then? 
Uh, uh, for this specifically, you can make a post. You can do like a service spotlight of what you did in the previous week. Uh, but for the people who are there, you still want to at least have a powwow at least. Like, okay, thank you so much to everyone who's still here at the end, at the end of the event. Uh, thank you for coming. Here's what you did. Uh, and those people can also just go home and feel like they've done a lot too. So you can do either or, but just always make sure to remind those people of what you did. This question was, what are oh, pancakes? Um, Chloe also asked another question. Yes, what are pancakes? Yeah, pancake breakfast. So it's like a fundraising, uh, Am I, is my Wi-Fi okay? I think your Wi-Fi is spotty. Oh no, I was going great until now. Um, anyway, you guys can hear me now, right? Yeah? Yes. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, Pancake Breakfast is like a fundraising event hosted by um, the local Kiwanians, Kiwanis clubs. Um, how often? It's like a once, once or twice a year, event that they host and they um, usually invite all the circle cares and uh, Kiwins, high schoolers from Kiwins from other schools in. I don't know, I don't know if all like Kiwanians host that, I think. For pancake breakfast? Yeah, for pancake breakfast. Yeah, so for pancake breakfast, Kiwanis clubs host those uh, as a means to fundraise for uh, more of their events and also just to help out their local communities. They usually serve a lot of like, elementary and high school uh, in the morning and they usually require a lot of volunteer support from Q Club. Uh, but since uh, they're on Saturdays and it's unlikely that they'll wake up, they usually ask for Circle K to help out. And this is where you usually get like a free pancake breakfast, which is pretty nice to like keep you awake in the morning. Uh, but it's also just nice like waking up like you might feel really tired like before you get to the event But once you're there, you're like wow, I feel, I feel productive. I feel like I'm helping people and you get to see the smiles on like the families who walk by and like you serve them It's just really wholesome and rewarding yes, That's what pancake breakfast are. If your Kiwanis clubs offer that If we had STC in person, they usually also help out at uh, STC too uh, another question from Chloe. Wow. Um, is it better to create an event page or have a post on your club page? Uh, for me personally, I think for like large scale, bigger events, I think it's more beneficial to host like an event page with like all the the banners and like, like more detailed informations. Uh, and you can like invite like, like how, however, many people we want um and uh and you can also like the good thing about like event pages are you can also post it on your cki page at the same time so uh you can explore that option uh, if it's like a small event you can just like make a small post about it um uh yeah that's how we use both tools yeah something else that i want to promote so i'm just going to exit the seat the screen uh, so if you are going to create a event page, then you're probably going to need a graphic. But if your club is really small and you don't have someone dedicated to create graphics for you, then do I have a resource for you? I'm going to plug uh, the committee I was on this term, which is CNM. Uh, so obviously, if your club is small or you really don't want to make a graphic, then you can just request a graphic from CNM. So you just go to the resource, well, you go to cnhcircleok.org, which is a really helpful resource to use. You're gonna go to resources, and then you're gonna go to communications and marketing, and then you're just gonna go to the graphic request form, which is recently updated. And this is where you have to request, like submit your request within like two weeks in advance, so you can get the graphic done. But you will literally have two graphic designers working on your request so that you don't have to, and you'll know it'll be good because they're on CNM, like, hello. Uh, so you can just specify what you want, and they'll get you that graphic within two weeks. So uh, I, I would drop the, I guess I can just copy and paste this. So yes, this is a very helpful form if you need graphics, but your club is small, or you don't have someone dedicated for that. Uh, 
But yes, thank you for asking that question. They're very helpful. Uh, okay, what other questions did we get? There's a question that uh, um, for distinguishing large scale and medium scale servants. Uh, is my Wi Fi? Are your Wi Fi hacking again? Can you, hear, can you guys hear me again? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Uh, I was I was using hotspot earlier, but now, <laughs> now it expired. Um, yeah, so I would say distinguishing like the size of a service project or events is honestly it's, it has to do with like the part member participations for the event as well as like its impact on um, the community that you're helping out with. And Sandra, do you want to add more into that? Yeah. So she clarified. Uh she was talking about how to plan um, oh. medium to large. Also, like, if you need to go, feel free to go. But we're just still going to answer questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yes, so for that, how do you plan large scale? Medium scale events? If you're planning it from scratch, so uh, if you're planning a single service project, which is just a project that's literally created from scratch by your club, like you provide the materials for it, you provide the project, you provide the funding for it, and you know you provide your own promotion, um, then I would advise you to plan, if it's like a medium-sized single service project, then you could honestly do three months of planning. But if it's a really large scale service project, then I recommend like, six months to a year so now would be the best time to start planning for single service projects if you're not doing much with service right now because usually if you think about it single service takes such a long time to plan just because you're busy with so many other things you have to plan service projects for every week and your focus really isn't single service but now that we have all this time in the world to like really plan out what kind of large scale service project you want to do i really strongly recommend that everyone take this time to start planning and start creating committees and start planning different projects that you can accomplish. And oh, I think something that other clubs, I think UC San Diego does this, uh, they do impact projects uh, where they just, I think they focus on a specific cause that they want to focus on for a particular month and then they have ad hoc committees to work on it. They're called impact teams. And, and then they, oh yes, impact teams. So, and then they do the project. So if anyone from UC San Diego wants to talk about that, feel free to unmute yourself. Seeing none, um, real quick. <laughs> um, so basically, Impact Teams was started years and years ago by one of our um, old VPS slash President Bradley Battalion. And essentially what it is, is you appoint a chair that chooses some sort of cause like breast cancer. Um, I can't remember the things that we've done on the, off the top of my head, but we've done stuff for like um, like cardiovascular diseases, a bunch of different areas. And they create a team that does like a one week awareness, fundraisers, and um, a part of the uh, service budget goes to them to work on that said project. So it's just like an independent thing um, that's different from our DSI and our DFIs. Thank you, Erica. Uh, yeah, that's, oh yeah. If you wanna learn more about impact teams, then, you know, UC San Diego is a really great resource that you guys can reach out to because you know they actively do impact teams and I really highly recommend you look into joining other uh, other clubs on Facebook just to learn more about what kind of services they offer and it also allows you to connect with your counterparts like right now in the zoom call like you're probably talking to like the rest of your counterparts so please reach out to each other and connect but thank you for that question I'm gonna go back up to this other question, which is, oh my, so many. Uh, what are we, oh, hi, do you know where we can find the information about the Circle K objectives? Yes, I can tell you where to find that. So, similar to what I said before, like there's so many resources that this website offers you, but like a lot of people don't check just because it's, it's kind of hard to navigate sometimes. So you just have to go to resources just go to service and the service committee makes a manual, I think every year, every other year where they just tell you more about different, different definitions that you need to be concerned about. Uh, so 
this literally, I call this the Bible for VPS and service chairs because it talks about literally everything. So if you want to learn more, like I think this or district service initiative might be a little outdated because I think it was with the current initiative, but it still has good information. So definitely check out the service tab and it has like everything you need to know. So this is where you can find resources about pretty much everything we talked about. Thank you for your question. Next question, what are some ways to get more members to join and stay active? John, do you want to take that one? Oh, what was that? Uh, what are some ways to get more members to join and stay active? More members to join and stay active. Um, that's more of like a member, like recruitment and retention. Um, so I guess, Right. Yeah. I guess it's important to take advantage of like all the tabling activities and like, uh, like club rush or like, like events like that, like big events where you can like advertise your um, clubs. Um, and I guess like allowing them to like having them like stay, um, a lot of members stay is, um, well, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge expertise on that, but um, it's uh, basically you gotta like try to keep them more, like, like I said, keep them more engaged um, with like fun and interactive uh, service activity. Um, that's one way. Um, uh, Sandra, do you, do you want to add more to that? Yeah. So there are different things that you can do. Like, it is more about like member development or like whatever that position looks like for your club, but your board should be working on things like welcome week. So if you have something like Discover Fest or a week where you're recruiting to new members, potential new members, you also want to create a time like like a week after that initial event to do events relating to your position. So you could do service within like a welcome week for your, uh, for your club to do, which would be a really great way to get new members or prospective new members to check out like what kind of service products you guys do. Uh, and meet people at service. That's like a, a really great way to get people to join the club because you know people There's different reasons why people join the club. Like oh, I want to be a leader within a community service organization. Cool Or I want to do community service. I'll join this club and You know go into these kinds of events made it really fun for me personally where I, I could do community service but not feel too pressured to you know To apply for anything if I wasn't comfortable doing so and it was just like the best work, like starting point for me as a new member to just check out the events that the clubs have to offer. Uh, other things you can do. Uh, so sometimes people want to see inner clubbing a lot more uh, because they want to check out what other Circle K clubs from other schools do. So I highly recommend inner clubbing this year, uh, doing more with them at service projects. And you can usually do so within your own division at something called divisional service projects, which are DSPs for short. Uh, and here's a really great opportunity to get to meet people from UCI, if you're in Citrus or IBC or Saddleback. Uh, so, you know, this is like a really great networking opportunity as well. So that's just, those are some things to keep in mind when you're promoting service and Circle K. Thank you for your question. Okay. What doing something for a fundraiser, for example, getting pied or accepting dares for donations count as a service? Yes and no. So uh, what my club did this year, okay, for fundraisers specifically, in my opinion, I don't think you should get service hours for it if you're doing dares, just because you're not really serving the community and that's something you need to really consider. Like, how am I helping the community by getting pied in the face or dyeing my hair or shaving my head? So you're not really benefiting the community. Uh, if anything, you're kind of doing a disservice to yourself by, by doing so, but you're fundraising for a good cause, which is good. Um, but some ways that you can quantify like a service fundraiser, because even when you raise money, it is considered service, but you can't really serve something like raising money for service, because uh, you can't quantify a service hour from that. So something you can do is, let's say you're planning a fundraising event, uh, where you do like a lip sync, or for a Cal Fullerton, we do a lip sync battle. Uh, throughout the weeks, like leading up to the event, you know, we have a committee of like pretty much anyone in the club who wants to work on decorations. And people who come to those decoration days get service hours because they're actively building something, making decorations for the fundraiser. Um, 
that's not something they can really get leadership hours for, but it goes towards a fundraiser. So that's how you can, they can get service for it or service hours for it. Are there any other questions? Oh yeah, there's <laughs> there's questions. Let me see. Um, okay. The question was, how would you encourage more members to participate as event chairs or get general members to chair events? Mm, okay, I guess I will, I will go. Um, mm. So usually within the first few months of your term, you're honestly pretty much like the only person chairing your events. And uh, this is so that you get to learn how to chair events and lead, you know, powwows or kudos circles or whatever you guys want to do with your uh, verbal affirmation time. Uh, but this is a, a, a training phase for you to just actively practice what you've learned. So you're more comfortable you know, creating large scale events and planning these events. And you know, once you start feeling more comfortable, that's when you can really encourage more members to participate as event chairs. Uh, and how you would do this is usually for like House of Fullerton, like, we usually start letting general members chair events when our family competition starts because they can get points for that. So that's another way you can work with the membership development chairs at, in your club. Like you can have like attending service projects, chairing a service project or take a selfie at a service project. That's like, you know, you can incorporate that aspect of service into things of member retention. Um, also, you wanna make sure that the way you advertise service and the way you are at service is not intimidating to general members. Because sometimes general members are really just scared. They don't know what to do. And the biggest reason why they don't wanna chair events is just because they feel like they're not good enough. So you want to reassure them like, hey, it's okay. Everyone starts off from somewhere and you know, talk about the benefits of being a event chair and you just got to hype it up and make sure you can cater to whoever you're talking to because like, I'm, right now I'm talking as if I'm gassing someone up and like this person is really extroverted, but like you could very well be talking to a very introverted and timid person who does not do well with that. So just make sure you can cater to different personalities and figure out what works. Uh, we will take one more question, but be before that, I'll, I just want to add on to what Sandra said. Um, I was focusing specifically on like chairing events, uh, it's a great idea. It would be a great idea to um, uh, potentially host a workshop based on um, educating members on how to um, chair events. So, yeah, like it would be a great, yeah, we'll try try to like. I feel like some general members um, when they join. Circle K, they are not aware of like what chairing means. Like they literally think it's like chair that you sit on or it's on my clubs, like from my personal experience. So like, it's good to like let them know what chairing exactly is so that they'll have a clear idea of like what it is and how to, how they can um, do that. Um, what are ways to stay motivated when coordinators reject you and don't keep in touch? Uh, how to prevent getting burnout and low morale? Uh, hmm. Uh, stay motivated. I mean, it's because try to like give yourself and your club more like credit and like like try you gotta like value your time um, more, I guess. So like, there's always other events that you guys can find or like like I said earlier, um, if you guys can't. Um, get a reach of like the coordinator that you really wanted to um, talk to like or you were really interested in that event um, I would say that like don't stress out too much like it really happens um, like it's really important like it's uh, like at that point at, at that point you're pretty much like wasting your time so like I would say like move on and like try to look for other events that's uh, more beneficial for your club um, and like you know, you know you can host like tabletop events like you can also like enter club with people with uh, the clubs within your division and um, okay. okay, so since we have to end, uh, well, we're sorry we can't answer like the last question, but if you have any more questions, please feel to reach out to me or John or just about like anyone who's in this call right now, like reach out to your counterparts, feel free to add us on Facebook. And if you 
for some reason, if you still want to like talk on Zoom after this, I want to go ahead and end this, this Zoom session. But afterwards, just hit me up and I'm down to talk about it. But thank you for attending. Thank you so much, everyone. Appreciate it. Yes. I'll go ahead and end this meeting for everyone. But thank you. Good job, Sandra. Good job, Jump Hug. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. <laughs>